Hey everyone, I'm Charles Judd and welcome to the first video under the 1.2 section of the CCIE Blueprints dedicated to routing concepts. The first item, 1.2a, is the topic of administrative distance. Administrative distance is a way that we can rate the trustworthiness of a routing source, such as another router or a completely separate network. So let's talk a bit more about what that means. The main job of our routers is to choose the best path among all of the available options for our traffic. And that's done by building and maintaining a routing table. Our network can use all sorts of different routing protocols, be that OSPF, EIGRP, BGP, and so on. Our routers will build a routing table by collecting information from those routing processes. This can include directly connected networks or remote networks. The packet forwarding process on our router will request information from this routing table in order to make packet forwarding decisions. If we learn about a route from multiple routing protocols, let's say we have the same route available via OSPF and internal EIGRP, then the lowest administrative distance will be given preference. So in that case, EIGRP with an AD of 90 would be preferred over the AD of 110 that we see with OSPF. Here's a table that you definitely want to memorize. It's just one of those many pieces of information that you're gonna to need to commit to memory. These are the default administrative distance values, and they start with an administrative distance of zero for a directly connected interface, an administrative distance of one we can see is a statically configured route, and then of course we start to see our dynamic protocol administrative distances. And at the bottom, we see an AD of 255, indicating that the route source is unknown and that this route will not be installed in the routing table. Again, these are the default values, but we can modify those administrative distances. And why would we want to do that? Well, for one, if you're performing route redistribution, which we'll take a look at in a future video, this will let you select a routing protocol to take precedence regardless of the default AD. Let's say you have both OSPF and RIP learned routes out to the same destination. Now by default, OSPF would be used because it has a lower administrative distance. However, by either lowering the AD of RIP or by raising the AD of OSPF, you can force the router to use those RIP learned routes instead of the OSPF learned routes. Another common reason to do that is to use a static route as a backup to a dynamically learned route. A static route, as you can see, has an administrative distance of one, which is going to take precedence over any dynamic routing protocol by default. However, let's say we have a static route that we want to use as a backup for an OSPF learned route. We can raise the static routes AD to a value that is higher than OSPF. Maybe we would raise that to 115. And then it would only be used if the OSPF route is unavailable. We call that a floating static route, which is a static route that has a higher administrative distance than the value of one. And we use those to back up another type of route. Let's look at this in action and see how we can change the AD values for some of our routing protocols. Here you can see the topology that we're going to use. I have four routers and I have a switch acting as an access switch out to a host subnet of 192.168.0.0 slash 24. R1 has its gig 0 slash 0 interface running EIGRP and that connects out to router 2 which is also running EIGRP. The gig 0 slash 1 interface on router 1 is running OSPF and that's connecting out to router 3 which is also running OSPF. So essentially what we have here is we have two different paths that we can take from R1 in order to get to R4 and eventually out to the 192.168.0.0 slash 24 network. So here on router one, if we say show IP EIGRP topology, we can see that with EIGRP, the 192.168 0.0 slash 24 subnet, that's going to use the next hop address of 10.0.0.2, which is router 2. If we say show IP OSPF rib, 
then we can see our 192.168.0.0 slash 24 network can be reached via 10.0.0.6, which is the next hop address on router three. If we say show IP route on router one, we can see our routing table. And here at the very bottom, we see our 192.168.0.0 slash 24 network. And at the beginning, we see the code D listed. If we look at our code table at the top, this tells us that this route was learned via EIGRP. And additionally, if we look again at the bottom, this is telling us that we get to that network via 10.0.0.2, which is of course router two. Why is that? Well, that's because the administrative distance for EIGRP is lower than that of OSPF, and therefore it is the preferred path. We can actually see that here as well. On our two routes that we have listed via EIGRP, notice the administrative distance is listed as 90. For our OSPF learned route, the administrative distance is 110. Those are both the default AD values for those particular protocols. So this is behaving exactly as we would expect. Now, what will happen if we install a static route? Since a static route has an administrative distance of one by default, this should be the preferred route. So let's actually try that and see. Let's go under global configuration mode and let's say IP route. And we wanna say the route to 192.168.0.0 with a 24-bit subnet mask. We wanna say the next hop address, let's use router three, which will be the next hop address of 10.0.0.6. We'll hit enter, let's break out. And now let's say show IP route. This time we'll notice the S code at the beginning, letting us know that this is a static route. And we see that this network is going to be reached now via 10.0.0.6, which is of course R3. We can also see the administrative distance value of one listed here as well. That is the default value. Let's go back. Let's remove this static route entry by prepending the keyword no at the end of that. If we break out and again say show IP route, notice that our route to this network is back as it was. We're back to normal again. We're back to using EIGRP via router two to get to our 192.168.0.0 slash 24 network. Now I mentioned the concept also of a floating static route where we change the administrative distance so that our route will act as a backup route. So let's take a brief look at that. Let's go under global configuration mode and let's arrow up to our original IP route command that we used to install a static route. But this time, if we look at contextual help, you'll see that we're able to set a distance metric, or in other words, an administrative distance for this route. And we can set that to a number between one and 255. One, of course, is the default. And if we assign that the number 255, then it's not going to be installed in the routing table. If we look at our output again, notice that EIGRP again has an AD of 90, OSPF has an AD of 110. So what if we wanted to make this static route a backup route that takes over if EIGRP goes down rather than using the OSPF learned route? Then we could set our administrative distance to a value between 90 and 110. So in this case, I'll just set that to 100 and I'm gonna hit enter. Now let's break out of here. Let's say show run pipe to the section, including IP route so that we can verify that this is in our configuration. We do see that here. We see our IP route, our static route, our floating static route. In other words, because we've changed the AD, we've given that an administrative distance of 100. Now, if we say show IP route, we're not going to see this route in our routing table. And that's normal. This route will not be installed into the routing table until our route with the lower administrative distance, which is of course EIGRP, until that route is unavailable. So let's jump over to router two. And let's go under interface gig zero slash zero, which is connecting to router one using EIGRP. And I'm just gonna say shut to shut down this interface. Our EIGRP neighborship is going to go down over to R1, and we're gonna see that message pop into the console. 
And there we actually see that happen. The neighbor is down at the moment. So now if we say show IP route, you'll notice that we're now using that static route and we're gonna go over router three to reach our end device subnet. We can see our administrative distance of 100. So this has taken over rather than allowing OSPF to take over. If we jump back to router two and say no shut to bring that interface back up, we're gonna see our EIGRP neighborship reform. And once we do that, we'll again say show IP route. If we say show IP route now, things are again back to normal and we are using EIGRP to reach that network and our floating static route has been removed from the routing table. You should also know how to change the administrative distance of the protocols found within the CCIE blueprint, which are EIGRP, OSPF, and BGP. Now this is something we'll dive into more when we look at route redistribution. Route redistribution is where we would commonly see a case where we would want to change the default administrative distance values. But I do wanna briefly just show you how we do that from the command line. If we go under global configuration mode, we can go under our EIGRP autonomous system number. In my case, I would say router EIGRP one. And once we're under there, I would simply say distance EIGRP, and we follow that with two values. And by the way, this will change the administrative distance globally for EIGRP. The first number, as you can see here from contextual help, is the internal administrative distance, which by default is 90. We would follow that with the external administrative distance, which of course is the value 170 by default. If we go back, we can also do this with our OSPF as well by calling out our OSPF process ID. So in my case, I would say router OSPF one. And again, I wanna say the distance keyword followed by OSPF. And if we look at contextual help, notice we can split this out into external into inter area or intra area. Again, OSPF is a concept we'll examine more in depth later, but just for now, know that the default for all of these areas in OSPF is 110, but you can change each of those individually here if you want to do that. And finally, let's just briefly look at BGP. If we say router BGP one, one of course being the autonomous system number, and we can say distance, BGP, and if we look at contextual help, you'll see the first number that we're able to change is the administrative distance for routes external to the autonomous system number, the default value being 20, and we follow that with the administrative distance for routes internal to the autonomous system, or in other words, IBGP, and the default for that is 200. And of course, we've already looked at how we can alter the AD of a static route. Now, there are also ways to change the BGP administrative distance for specific neighbors, and we'll look at that closer at a later time. So that's a look at administrative distance and how that's used in our routing table to determine the best path to a particular destination. I hope you found this content useful, and I want to thank you sincerely for watching.